Hi, we're now ready to take our next step in terms of analysis and tackle something that's a little bit more difficult. Um, the excerpt that we're going to look at today is just basically two phrases from a Bach chorale. Now, uh, a very important exercise in learning how to analyze music is to really learn how to take a look at Bach style writing and begin to figure out what's going on with the theory. The theory in a Bach chorale tends to be much more difficult than basic little tunes, so there, there can be some room for argument in some of these, but we'll take a look at these and see what we can come up with. Um, for now, let's go to the excerpt and we'll begin trying to explain what's happening here. We're going to look at Bach's chorale number 167 and uh, go through our process a little bit. We'll do this together and hopefully it'll kind of show you some of the thought processes of going through an analysis. Uh, first thing we want to do is take a look at the key signature just like with any other analysis and you'll see that we have one sharp in the key signature which tells us that we're either in G major or in E minor. Now we're going to have a little uh, room for argument right off the bat because if you take a look at the first chord that's represented you'll notice that the notes there are E G and B or an E minor triad so one might be compelled to think that we're going to be in minor here okay however if we look a little farther down the line you're going to see that the note we're heading to uh, over here where the fermata is the chord represented there is G B D or a G major triad. So it allows us for a little bit of question so we're, we're not sure yet as we take a look. We do know as we uh, look at this that the first triad is an E minor and the half note triad at the beginning of the third or the second full bar is a G major triad. So let's analyze some of the others as we go. If we look at the first beat of the first full measure, you'll see that we have the notes B, D, and, excuse me, a B, a D, and a G. And the B is on the bottom. So here we have a G major chord, G, B, D, and B is on the bottom, so it's a six chord. So this is a G major chord in the first inversion. Now that begins to give us a little idea that I'll bet we're going to be in the key of G major because now we've got a one chord there and we've got a one chord here. So this is starting to kind of solidify this in, in my mind anyway. So let's start working from uh, that position and let's go ahead and label the first chord that we see as a six chord. So we've got a six chord and then we have a one six. Now, the next thing that I'm looking at is this eighth note here and I'm wondering what function it might serve. Well, that eighth note almost certainly is what we call a passing tone. It doesn't really have a function in terms of the harmony. It's more of a melodic note and it doesn't really have a function. Let's look at the second full beat of that measure and let's see what we have here. Here we have a C, an E, and a G and you know that that's a C major triad and if we go to our good old uh, G major scale which I've gone ahead and put together here you'll see that right here at the four chord designation we have C, E, and G. That's our four chord. So, that second beat of the first four, full measure is a four chord. And again, there is a passing tone here, the A, that's moving us to the next chord designation. Again, doesn't really have a role in terms of the harmonies, it's just a melodic note. It's a passing tone. That happens, okay? Take a look at the next beat, beat three. And on beat three, we have, on the bottom, we have a B, then we have a B an octave above that, and then a D, and then a G. 
which tells me that's a G, B, D chord. It's a G major chord, or the one chord in the first inversion. So that's a one six. And we go to the next measure, or the next beat after that. And this one has an A on the bottom, a C, an E, and another A on top. And we start taking a look at that, and we take a look and go, okay, A, C, E, what might that be? Let's come back over here to our G major triads, and if we take a look at the two chord, you're going to notice that A, C, and E are represented, and in fact, that is a two chord in minor, okay? Uh, now, uh, and, oh, and you'll also notice that we have another passing tone. It's a melodic note. doesn't really have much to do with the chords. So our chord progression for the first phrase is 6 to a 1-6 to a 4, 1-6, and 2 to a 1. Okay, let's move on to the next phrase. We look here at the fourth beat of that measure. We have a G on the bottom, a D, we have another G, and then we have a B on the top. G, B, D. I'm betting that's a one chord. So there's our one. We go on, and what do we have here? E on the bottom, another E, a G, and a B. There's our good old EGB. There it is. E minor chord, E minor triad is our 6. So we're going to go ahead and write a 6 there. Next chord, we have Bs on the bottom. On the right hand are the soprano notes, G and a D. We put those together. That's a G, B, D, back to our 1. And the B is on the bottom, so that's a 1-6 inversion. Next beat, right here, C's on the bottom in the octaves, E, G. It's a C major triad or a 4 chord. Simple enough. Hopefully you're starting to see it. A couple of passing tones here in the eighth notes, and then the next, the fourth beat, B on the bottom, D, and then on the top we have a G and a B. There's our good old G major triad again in the 6 inversion, 1-6. What's happening here at the first beat of the next measure? We have a D on the bottom, another D, an octave up, an A, and a G. That's kind of weird. You'll notice also here that we have an A right there. Okay? So we have D, A, D, A with a G hanging in there. And that G doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay? But if we look at the next beat, we have a lot of those same kinds of notes in this beat as well. We have a D, which we've already seen there. We have a C here, which might have some function, but most importantly, here we have an F sharp. So if we look at those two beats together, we have D, F sharp, A, and then this note right here is a C, and that gives us our good old 5-7 chord. So really, those two beats, beats one and beat two of that bar, are a 5-7 chord, and that really makes sense when we get to the fermata here and we see that our notes are G, B, D, G, or 1. And isn't it true that we really want to feel that 5-7 pulling to a 1? So we can pretty much guarantee that those two first beats of that bar are all framing out a 5-7 chord with a passing tone. Uh, up here on that G. That's the only note in that two beats that doesn't 
sort of have a, uh, a function in the chord. But this ought to give you a little idea of how one would approach a Bach chorale and really start analyzing it. Sometimes you have to sort of work backwards. Um, in this particular instance, we didn't really know what key we were in until we looked at several chords. We looked at the first chord, we looked at the second chord, and we looked at the first fermata. And, and after looking at all of those and then really pulling in the, the, the second and the third beat, it became very clear, okay, we're working in the key of G major, not in the key of E minor. And this analysis makes lots of good sense as we move forward in the key of G, especially the fact that in the second phrase we have that strong dominant relationship of 5-7 to 1. So that'll give you a little idea of how to analyze a Bach chorale. Uh, you've got some analysis to do as part of the assignment. Go ahead and give it a try. Uh, make sure that you work to figure out what key you're in first and then once you have the key write in the function of each set of harmonies as you go through the piece. Um, good luck with this and be patient. Bach chorales can tend to get a little bit tricky.